Rep ranges are simple tools in a toolbox, nothing more, nothing less. That's all they are. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about this topic. Uh, and it's something that I've come to understand and realize over my many years of lifting, training, now coaching, looking at all the data, the research, uh, and ultimately it's the conclusion I've reached. And it's something that I do with my own training, something I do with my clients, my lifters, and that is understanding that rep ranges are just tools in a toolbox. And if you are trying to maximize your results, using different tools when they're appropriate, having different tools available to you, gives you more options, gives you better progress, and you're gonna get better results in the long term if you have access to more tools. Now, like with anything else, that doesn't mean that you have to always use every tool you have in the toolbox. And I think that's one of the mistakes people make a lot of times is when you say, hey, this is a really good tool. This is a really good tool. Well, people think then that they need to incorporate every one of those things every single week or every block of their training. And that's not always true. Uh, in the cases of rep ranges, I personally do use all the rep ranges every week at this point. Now, a lot of times you'll hear people in certain circles will actually say, well, he's right, I agree, in his bodybuilding circles, but then they don't actually do any really low reps, right? They don't do low reps. They pretend that they follow that advice. They don't go lower than eight reps. They certainly don't do singles. And I would argue that that's also a problem. Right? I would argue to those people that avoiding heavy singles or training maxes is being just as dogmatic as the people who say, I would never do a 15 rep or a 20 rep set when I'm trying to build strength. Right? Isn't that just equally as dogmatic? Let's come over to the point. All rep ranges are valuable. They're all useful tools in a toolbox. Back, I would make the argument certain lifts like deadlifts are generally only ideally done with singles. I mean, if in a perfect world, perfect training, you don't need to deadlift more than one rep at a time unless you're taking, you know, a 10 second break and resetting. That's still a single, isn't it? All rep ranges are useful. Uh, in my case, you guys will see me in this video alone doing singles, 10s, 15s, 20s, and even up to 50s. Use all of them. Now, I personally probably do more tens than anything else. Tens probably comprise 50% of my training. One's about 10%, and then, you know, everything else, higher reps up above that. But it all has uses, it all has value. And why do we say that? Well, because number one, certain exercises lend themselves better to certain rep ranges. They really do. They really do. Uh, a lot of multi-joint exercises, like the ones I'm displaying here, overhead pressing, floor pressing, hip thrust, things like that, actually tend to work really, really well around the 10 rep range. These are lifts that oftentimes when we go down to heavy singles, uh, particularly accessory versions of these, can be somewhat problematic. I mean, we can build muscle with them. We can build strength with them doing very, very low reps. We can use them as max effort lifts. But these are generally thought of as more hypertrophy exercises, it's not to say that I don't max out on overhead pressing or the floor press ever. But I tend to do those, you know, the 10 rep range, maybe a little higher, up to 15. But some of these lifts really start to become very, very fatiguing when you go above 10. Very fatiguing. We, all, we really want, in some cases, smaller exercise. On the hip thrust, perfect example. Big movements for the lower body. Um, oftentimes they're too fatiguing to really facilitate very, very high reps. I'd argue the squat is one of those. I don't do rep work on squats at all, personally. Use other lifts to build my legs. Squat for maximum weight. But these different exercises are oftentimes more useful in certain rep ranges. A lot of really small movements like laterals, right? Lateral raises, 
tricep extensions, curls. Realistically, most of those movements do better at the 10 rep and up range. They tend to do better, especially smaller movements for things like delts. Uh, band work. You know, again, stuff like I'm doing there for my triceps, like a 40, 50 rep set to failure. Phenomenal for building connective tissue, getting blood flow to tendons, uh, causing micro tearing through connective tissue uh, that will help hypertrophy it, reduces injury risk, makes tendons stronger. But we also get over to the point of the hypertrophic effect. A lot of these smaller movements like this, if we have access to limited weight and things like that, they tend to do really well with ultra high reps and they all produce muscle growth. Right? Heavy singles will maximize one rep max strength. They will teach you how to strain. And anyone who doesn't understand that that is truly functional strength has no business coaching or training anyone. Because if you think about it, one rep maxes, that's what teaches you to strain. That's what teaches you how to apply maximum force one time on a playing field, at a fighting ring, in an environment where you're in a survival situation and you're having to pull something off of someone, or you're in a really serious struggle or fight. Your ability to produce maximum force could be life and death. So if we talk about functional strength, you wonder, that's what a one rep max is, and it can be a one rep max against awkward loads. It's going to be your classic list, it can be your variations with chains, with bands, different barbells, right? That stuff is what builds functional strength. Because when you really have to push or pull something with all your might, you're usually doing it one time. As hard as possible. Okay? It's a value. Tens on a lot of exercises are a really, really good place for general hypertrophy. It's a good spot. It's a sweet spot. You can do less sets with less beat up of your body than lower reps. Right? Particularly big multi joint movements. Like you see here, floor press, hip thrusts, glute bridges, rows. Right? It works really well. You stimulate a lot of hypertrophy with only a few sets. And you're usually using weights that are light enough that if you do hit muscle failure on those lifts, you're not really at risk of injury. Right? Because that is a concern. Five rep, five rep max to failure on a big lift can hurt you. Tens, it isn't. It's less likely to, unless it's something like a squat. Fifteens, twenties. Again, a lot of movements really, really lend themselves well to that. It's good mornings, perfect example. Pen leg rows you'll see me doing here for fifteens in this video. Getting up into higher reps, people would say, well, you know, that's a, that's a lot of volume. It's not going to give growth. Well, if you take them close to failure, it does. But yes, it is a lot of training volume. And here's what people need to remember. The different rep ranges seem to cause hypertrophy through somewhat slightly different pathways. If your goal is to maximize muscle growth, and let's come over to the strength athletes. If you guys are trying to get as strong as possible, you better get all the primary movers as big as possible. You better do it. Same thing if you need support musculature. If you need your back to be bigger and thicker to give yourself a bigger base to bench press off of or to set the bar up on the squat with, you might want to maximize size as much as you possibly can. Those of you who are chasing hypertrophy for the sake of just being big and jacked, well, using multiple rep ranges as we get more advanced could facilitate that. It could help push you past stalls and sticking points because of the different elements involved. Same could be argued for hypertrophy for the heavy singles. There are muscle fibers, and I've seen Greg Knuckles discuss that. There are muscle fibers that only seem to be maximally fatigued under environments where you're exceeding 95% of your one rep max. Not taken to failure, we're not talking about doing a five rep set to failure or a 10 rep set to failure. No, heavy singles. 
So when you look at it in this context, it makes sense to use a variety of rep ranges and to think of them as tools, not something that you have an emotional attachment to. I prefer this. I li like to do this. Well, they're just tools in the toolbox and they all serve a purpose. They all have a place. Hey guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.